respect it, I mean We network across the globe Cause it's a global market in case you didn't know And since we all about information flow Let me be the first one to welcome you to Tech Zone With Paul Armadale Slane Let's talk tech cause technology changing the game It's all good in the hood, it's everywhere Now let's get to the show cause we live on air, yeah Welcome back here to the Tech Zone. We're live here at the Consumer Electronics Show 2017. I am Paul Amadeus Live, coming to you live here from the floor. And great technology, great folks we've been talking to. And I want to know, what is your favorite technology out there you would like for us to talk about here? And, and every year for the past, I'll say three or four years, and even on the morning show I used to host, I've, I've always enjoyed talking uh, to one of the, the great minds when it comes to Mac talking about larry o'connor he is ceo of owc larry how you doing my friend doing great paul thanks for having me back great to have you my friend so how is your ces been going thus far been busy it's been great i mean overbooked but hey we're making it work i mean we got a lot of it's always fun here i mean it's fun talking about you know showing off the new gear and you now you know, a few things maybe a little bit more disruptive this year so it's, it's been a great it's been fun a lot of work no sleep but hey i love this that's what i this is what i live for Tell me about it. It's like, you know, I look forward to it each and every year. I'm like, oh, CES is right around the corner. Let's do it. Let's do it. And yeah. uh, and uh, just enjoy uh, reconnecting with ones in the industry and, and just uh, finding out some of the great things that, that they are debuting uh, this year at CES 2017. And before we talk about the specifics that you guys are doing, Larry, here at CES, sure. how do you know what devices to really show here? You know, because, you know, you, you kind of have to make sure that you show things that, that ones are going to, to, to really uh, want to see. And, and it's really going to pique their mind. So walk us through the process of that. You know, I mean, we build products for the purpose. I mean, we build solutions. So, I mean, in our mind, I mean, everything that we're going to bring and show is, you know, of interest to somebody. I mean, it, it solves somebody's problem. I mean, we're not here to you know, try to, you know, hype the crap out of something. You'll know, show off something that doesn't exist yet. But, hey, if we get enough orders for it, we might make it. We bring real solutions to the market. We bring things that you know, kind of surprise folks. So, you know, this year, I mean, we brought our deck, which is our MacBook Pro expansion chassis. You know, it adds uh, internal storage. It adds ports. It basically, it, it puts, it, you know, it makes the MacBook Pro again, and it's it's garnered a lot of interest. We looked at this a few years ago, and this was the right the right time. Connectivity. Everything's going away. People have needs. It's yeah. We can, yeah, you have a robot that watches you sleep and a, a pillow that tells you if you snore and you know, all that. Great stuff. These are things that people need in their their day to day, and you know because they solve a problem, it, it, it's easy to. Well, I should say it's easy, but you know, it's CES has changed a lot the few years, but the the solutions you know, people still need them. That is so true, and and let's talk about the the Internet of Things and how that has kind of changed the game. You know, especially with, with your company too. How do you stay relevant? How do you stay just continuing to produce products out there that that the consumers uh, really need? You know, there's, especially uh, with the focus on data, I mean, a lot of our things involve data and data management, you know, some cloud. I mean, the storage is key to everything that's on the Internet, and storage needs grow every well, every day. So in terms of staying relevant, you know, unless people no longer need, no longer take photos, no longer take videos, no longer have all these devices in their homes communicating, have the cameras, everything that generates data, it's, you know, we have a, we still have to predict the future in a lot of ways and be there with the right product that can interface with IoT that being said, you know, unless storage goes away, we have plenty of relevance as long as we continue to, to see that future and understand why these things are important. And uh, let's talk about some of the products that you have have with you today. So well, what did you bring for our viewers' eyes to, to check out? Well, we're bringing simple. I mean, I'll start with the, the simplest, most, uh, I shouldn't say simplest, most basic. It's it's actually a lot more than, uh, I'd say, perhaps meets the eye. You know, USB-C is, you know, is, is Type-C connectors have come to be. I mean, that's, that is the future standard. You know, some companies like Apple have gone all Type-C with no other connectivity. Other laptop manufacturers are heading that same direction. Some already are. You have Chromebook, you have you know, Dells and such that are heavily relying on USB-C. And although the future will be a same connection, wireless is going to be huge. You're always going to need hardline. I believe Type-C is going to be around for a very long time. But you also have a lot of devices that don't plug in the Type-C. You have you still have hardline networks. You still have uh, video. You still have, uh, how do I say, you have still type, lots of Type-A devices. This uh, dock, our USB Type-C dock, gives you back a card reader, gives you back USB uh, Type-A ports for our uh, standard devices. It gives you back an HDMI connector. So when you get one cable you plug into your computer, it gives you everything. So you come home from 
traveling, come home from work, wherever you're taking your laptop, one cable, you get everything that's connected to this back on that system, and it charges your laptop too. So your power adapter stays in the bag, and it's, this is one device that connects you back up at home. So we think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I and, think that's pretty cool too. <laughs> and you know what? You can't just buy a hub for Type-C stuff. There's power management now involved with Type-C with USB 3.1 Gen 2. And if you're not doing the power management, devices don't, well, for lack of better, put it any other way, they don't work right. They don't work reliably. I mean, there's a lot of technology that goes into this. We actually, when we were doing this product at first, we were competing with Kickstarters that we actually thought they had something. And that was as we got closer to production and we were looking at the comments and the reasons why their product was delayed. It's like, they haven't even built this thing. This was, you know, somebody made this thing up. But, you know, we had the, the real deal and we shipped when we said we were going to ship. And, you know, the rest is history. But, you know, you buy it, you make an investment in something like this, it, it stays USB C is around for a long time, Type C I should say, and, and this dock will go with you. So this is kind of this is a fun product. I that's cool. Useful. And, so, and, and that's what I've noticed uh, when we talk about the, the Type C. When you use an adapter from say a regular USB 2.0 or 3.0, do you lose some kind of connectivity with devices, or if you do, how can you kind of combat that? Well, when you buy the right product to, to con interconnect all your devices, you know, you know that the right power is going to be provided, the bandwidth is there, the interface is there. It's talking to, you know, these Type-C systems have power management and device management, and this device, these are smart devices. Well, our product is a smart device in the sense that it's talking with the system, and as a result, you don't lose connect. You, you have reliability and performance that you don't just get from plugging a, a plain old hub. So the big thing is making sure that you have something that's at least properly powered, and $15 hub that you know, looks really nice and plugs in doesn't do it. It's, it's great that you start plugging devices into it. That's true. And that's where you have to go buy, have to go out and buy a good one like yours and, and just go ahead and do it right the first time so you don't have to always go back. What else you got, my friend? And I'll, get to the, I'll, get to, I'll save the best for last. All right. Actually, all this stuff is great stuff. You know, we, we're big in the video, audio, how to say portable storage. You know, this is our Envoy Pro a Thunderbolt 3 uh, SSD. It's a, an external SSD. It's plug and play, bus power, single cable. So you plug it into you know, the PC, Mac, up to uh, 2 gigabytes per second of sustained throughput. So if you're doing video editing, audio editing, you know, you need fast backup, fast transfer. You want to boot off of this in the field. This goes up to 2 terabytes and 2,000 megabytes per second. You know, that compares to an internal drive, like a hard drive that might be, you know, 50 to 100 megs a second, an SSD in most systems, you know, 400 to 550 megs a second. This thing is almost 2,000, actually, depending upon your content, over 2,000 megabytes a second. Very, very fast. Wow. Very, you know, how to say, compact and exceptionally portable. And it's rugged, too. I mean, you can run this thing over and you're still okay. <laughs> now, so it can withstand the weight of my wheelchair, right? Absolutely, positively. All right, sounds good. That's awesome. I love that. Love that. Love that. So, is this the granddaddy right here? Is this the the big reveal? This is kind of the big big reveal. You know, the Apple 2016 MacBook Pros only came out about six. They started shipping about six weeks ago. Now, we actually thought about this three years ago. In fact, you know, we even applied for a patent. I have a patent on utility and uh, and also the design. And what we saw coming down the pipe was systems that didn't have ports for expansion potentially didn't have the capability of internal expansion. And while we overcame that on the previous generation, so we kind of said, yeah, the, the previous you know, apples, I mean, we, there's enough here where this is really, maybe it's, it's not quite the right time. But when Apple introduced their new systems, they soldered the flash. They took away all the ports other than USB-C, I'm sorry, Type-C ports for Thunderbolt 3 and USB uh, 3. And they let, other than the USB 3, you have a, an optical jack on it. So for folks with all those Type-A devices, folks that have a, a hardline network, you know, for for Ethernet, you know, people who want it, even a card reader. You have multimedia, SD cards and, you know, and multimedia cards. Apple took that off of their, their latest generation. And the uh, the effort to make this super thin, which you know, thin is great, but functionality is still pretty important for folks that are, you know, really going out in the field. So this brings back all those ports, and we're actually, you know, we may actually when we ship it, introduce it with mini display ports. So it's even got a display, a standard wow. display connector, all ready to go for you. But in addition to the ports, we also put up the four terabytes of flash in these guys. And wow. that's important because when this, when you buy a machine, this machine, your storage is soldered. You can never upgrade the internal storage on this new 2016 MacBook Pro. But never? Our, it's, wow. uh, it, it's all on the logic board. There's almost nothing user serviceable in these. And as a tip to anybody buying a 2016 with Touch Bar, I highly recommend buy the Apple Care. Anything goes wrong with this, there's really nothing serviceable in it. You know, these are expensive machines, and I won't debate the cost because, I mean, it's, 
I think they're very expensive machines, especially having a soldered fixed storage uh, you know, situation. But they're expensive machines, and the last thing you want is a $2,500, a $4,200 brick. Never mind the cost of sales tax. So AppleCare is a very good investment on these because they're, they're very much glued together on the inside. Very slick machine. I mean, I, you, I can't knock the machine in terms of its engineering, but it's disappointing the lack of serviceability, lack of upgradability, and this gives people options. So when you run out of space in that internal, this is an option that integrates with the machine to give you that additional storage back and let you have flexibility with the future, keep it relevant, because flash is going to go down in cost over time. It's almost kind of a disappointment that you have to, maybe you think you're going to need two terabytes over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. To have to buy that today when, quite frankly, what you're going to pay for two terabytes today could buy you four terabytes you know, 18 months from now. That's true. It's, it's not cool. You know, that I is just, so true. I should be the buy what I need and upgrade later. You know, but that's, and you know, we continue, you know, the other machines, everything before this, you know, we go in turn. We're putting up to two terabytes inside, you know, the previous generation and back to, actually all the way back to 2007, 2006 MacBooks. You know, we, we take them up high. This guy, you know, we put a chassis on and we give you a whole boatload of opportunities. And coming as will be a battery and internal power, power master, so even be able to extend the runtime. For pros in the field, I mean, they're loving it. And I think long term, you're going to have consumers that when these machines start coming on to the secondhand market, you know, rather than, well, the same reason somebody's selling it is going to be a detriment to somebody who would be looking at it. This gives, I believe this gives, you know, some legs and some new life and opportunity to get more use out of these and keep these. Apple's built a computer that's going to last forever. Well, they last five or seven years. Right. They, they run a long time. They're, yeah, in computer years, right? <laughs> there you go, exactly. That, that's a long time. It is, it is forever, and all things being relevant, and it's such a, to me, it's a, it was a disappointment that you know this would pigeonhole or limit that lifespan, and this is a solution that, to bring that back. And I, I, I talk so much. I, I, I just keep on no, keep no. on going. No, I appreciate it because you're definitely giving some uh, some really good advice for ones out there who are looking uh, looking to buy that. And the piece of innovation that you guys built will will definitely help out some frustration out there. We certainly believe it, and uh, you know, that, that, you know, the proof is in the pudding, but. You know, at this point, we've had a lot of a lot of great feedback on it. You know, we're, it was something that we were to bring out. You know, 12 days ago, we weren't coming to uh, to show anything at the show. We were here for meetings, and you know, as of 11 days ago, you know, we have a we set up a suite. We set up meetings. We you know we're excited that we could get this thing turned, get it into uh, a state where it could be shown, and you know here we are. So it's good stuff. And I can imagine the great feedback you guys have gotten too from from ones in your suite too. It's it, you know it's it it again it keeps it fun. I mean it's. If you never want to have. You know, we're looking for object. You know, hey, it's, we want objective feedback, and it. You know, it's just always good when that objective feedback is. You know, you know, is along our thinking. And as a note, I mean, this machine, you know, is with our deck on it, with our expansion chassis. It's no thicker than a, a 2012 MacBook Pro. So we've brought it back, you know, to where Apple was. You know, brought the ports back. You know, kept the weight actually under what the original 2012 was. So it's a few ounces lighter than that machine. It's you know, it's actually it's, you know, a little bit slimmer than that machine. But we're bringing in all that functionality back, and we kind of say you know, it's it's future past perfect because I mean it, it really does. You know, put the Pro back in MacBook Pro. Awesome, awesome, Larry. Before we let you go, my friend from OWC, anything else you'd like to bring out to the to the viewers out there? You know, the, in general, the only tip I, I leave everybody with is, you know, look at your hardware, Mac, PC, you know, it doesn't, you know, how to say it, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's so many systems that we see come in where nobody's, you haven't upgraded the memory, you're still running on a hard drive, haven't put in an SSD. You know, these machines, you know, you can do, you you will be amazed, you know, what happens when you put a little simple upgrade. You know, they're very cost effective. You drop it in, you go, and now all of a sudden you you thought you needed to buy a new machine. You just spent $100 to put a great SSD inside, and you have a new machine. So make sure you, you know, always maximize what you have. When it's time to buy new, hey, it's time to buy new. But you be, you know, people are shocked when they find out what a what very simple upgrades do to existing systems. So we're here to keep these suckers real, keep them going for the long term. Because yeah, that's it's great for sustainability. It's great for you know the pocketbook. And the reality is, for the last few years, there's not been a whole lot of you know, real evolution, certainly in processor technology. So buy a new machine just for performance upgrade. You know, the majority of the performance comes when you go from a machine that had a hard drive to a solid state drive, and you can put that solid state drive right in the system you have now. Absolutely. Larry, great advice, my friend, and we look forward to chatting with you uh, later on in the year. You can let us know what's going on with the company and some of the things we can look forward to, and it's always a pleasure uh, catching up with you here at, at CES 2017, my friend. Already 2017. Thank you very much, Paul. Again, it's always a pleasure. Love, love, love coming on. Awesome, awesome. Hey, and when we get back here, 
live from Consumer Technology Show 2017. We'll have some more great interviews, more great guests like Larry joining us. So uh, sit back and relax and watch out for those alerts coming up. We'll be right back here on the Tech Zone.